Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about combinations and permutations. So let's dive in. First, I want to define factorial. So the factorial of a non-negative integer, n, is the product of all positive numbers less than or equal to n. So the equation for that would be n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down until we get to 1. Right? So the way to think of it is it's n itself multiplied by the number 1 less than n, then the number 2 less than n, then the number 3 less than n, and so on, until eventually we reach 1. So an example is, let's say we wanted to find out what 8 factorial was. Well, 8 factorial is going to be equal to 8 times 1 less than 8, which is 7, times 1 less than 7, which is 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. And then once we get to times 1, we can stop. Uh, next, I'm going to discuss why factorials might be useful and some different ways that we could, um, you know, some different ways that we could uh, use them. So a factorial is useful essentially when, whenever it's an example of a certain number of people or unique objects that are lining up in a certain line, and we want to know how many possible arrangements are, there are. One specific example you'll often see is how many ways a certain number of people can line up at a bus stop or how many ways a certain number of unique letters could be arranged. Here it looks like they've chosen the bus stop example, so we'll go with that one. They ask, in how many different ways can five people line up at a bus stop? And the answer is five factorial, because it's five people, and so it's 120 ways, because five factorial is equal to 120. And we can find this out by using our calculator, or by writing out five times four times three times two times one, and recognizing that that is 120. Now, I also want to discuss how come this works. How come factorial is essentially a magic thing that can tell us how many ways uh, that number, the number n, can be arranged in, essentially, if we have a certain number of unique objects or people lined up or arranged in a certain way. Well, let's think about it. But let's forget about factorials for a second and just draw a bus stop and think about what the answer would be. Okay, so I have five people lined up who are going to line up at my bus stop. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, well, out of these five people, how many ways are there, or how many uh, possibilities are there for who could end up first? Well, it could be any of these five people. It could be person one, two, three, four, or five. And so there's five possibilities. Okay, then what about the second spot in the bus stop? How many ways are there for someone to line up here? Well, the thing is, one of these people, we don't know which one, but one of these five people already lined up in the first spot. And so now we have one less person. I'll admit, I don't know necessarily that it's this person specifically. It could have been a different person, but it doesn't actually make a difference here. The point is that we know that, I, and I, in any case, uh, there's one person who already lined up in the first spot, and we want to know how, to, how many people are left to line up in the second spot. Well, there's only four people left, because whoever lined up here isn't also going to line up here as well. They're already in the bus stop line. So four people left. Okay, now that one of those four people, let's say this one, although it doesn't matter, it just matters that one of these four people lined up, how many ways are there for, how many possibilities are there for um, the person to line up in the next spot? Well, there's three people left, three possible people for the next slot. And then, okay, someone lined up there, great, we can cross someone else off. Now there's only two people left, so only two possibilities for the fourth spot in line. And then after that, only one possibility left for the last spot in line. And so the answer would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 120. But also note that this is also equal to 5 factorial. By definition, the factorial is just that number multiplied by the next number down, multiplied by the next number down, and so on, all the way until we get to 1. And so that's why this works. Right? That's why this works every time that we have unique objects or people that we are trying to arrange in a certain way. All right, next let's talk about permutations. Permutations refer to different ways in which a set or number of things can be arranged.
So I want to discuss what's the difference between a permutation versus a factorial. In the factorial examples, we would, we're going to assume that every single person or object in that factorial is going to be part of the arrangement. Whereas permutations are where we take a certain number of objects or people and we rearrange just those people. And so there's kind of two parts to it. There's the part of actually arranging the people who are selected, but there's also how many ways can we actually select those people in the first place, right? So to give an example, let's say that there are 20 people racing, right? Let's say there are 20 people racing and there's three places. There's first place, there's a first place trophy, there's a second place ribbon, and there's a third place ribbon. Well, is everyone going to be selected to be in this top three? Well, no, not everyone's going to be selected. Only three out of the 20 people are actually going to be, well, not, not exactly selected, I suppose, are going to earn their place by getting first, second, or third, right? And so in this case, there's essentially two things that happen here. First, we have to know which three out of the 20 actually get first, second, and third, and also um, which one got first, which one got second, and which one got third, in this case, absolutely does matter, right? As much as it's an honor to win any of those and a great thing to win any of those, of course, you probably do care if you've won first, second, or third. And so even if it's the same three people as the top three, the order that they win in does matter. At least to them, probably it does matter, right? Maybe to the people who didn't win anything, it doesn't matter, make much of a difference. But, you know, it does matter. It's, it's, it's still a different arrangement if person A gets first, person B gets second, and person C gets third, versus if maybe C gets first, B gets second, and A gets third. That is, that is different. Absolutely. So, um, basically, the equation is P bracket n comma r is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial, where n is basically the total number of people who could be selected or total number of objects that could be selected. In this particular example, n would be 20. And then r is the number of people who are um, who actually are selected. So this is the actual number of people or objects that are selected, or in this case, winning first prize and second prize and third prize. And so in this case, R would be three because we actually only care about the top three. We don't actually care about the rest of the order. And so regardless of who got fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, down to 20th, we actually don't care. We're actually just looking at how many ways there are for people to win the actual prizes here, right? Whereas if we cared about the exact order of all 20 people, and that would just be 20 factorial. We wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be using permutations in that case. Okay, so let's do another example about permutations. How many ways can three students be chosen and arranged from a group of six? Okay, so originally we have a group of six students. Let's call them A, B, C, D, E, and F. That's six people. And we want to choose three of them and then arrange them in a certain order. And the goal is to know, okay, how many ways can we possibly do that, right? Well, one way is to just choose A, B, and C and arrange them this way. One way is to choose C, D, and E and arrange them this way, right? But, but basically, we want to know how many different ways are there to possibly do this, right? How many ways are there to choose three people and then arrange them in, in some way with each arrangement of the people counting as a different permutation? Well, to answer that, I need to say, well, the, uh, the group we're selecting from is six people, so N is six. And the number of people who can be chosen is three, so R is three. And so as, as always, P permutation of N comma R is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. That means in this case, we have six factorial since N is six over six minus three factorial. And we're supposed to get that that's 120, but I'm gonna, well, I wanna show in a bit more detail why would that be 120. Well, six factorial is six times five times four, and then times three times two times one. But keep in mind, three times two times one is really just three factorial. So I'm just gonna write three factorial. Then six minus three factorial is three factorial. And then I'm gonna cross out the three factorials. These cancel. And I just get six times five times four. Well, six times five is 30 and 30 times four is 120. And so yes, we did get that the answer is 120. And thus, 
there are 120 different ways to select three students and randomly arrange them. There are 120 different possible arrangements that we could make in this example. All right, so next, that leads me to, um, to combinations. Now, combinations refer to the selection of items without considering the order, right? So I'm going to give an example or a couple examples of when we actually might not care about the order. So let's say, for example, that my daughter has 10 toys and she can select three toys to go on vacation with her. In this case, does the order of the toys matter? Like, let's say she selects the bear, uh, the toy bear, and then the toy dog, and uh, what's another toy? Uh, perhaps the, the a chew toy or something like that, something to, to chew on. All right, let's say she selects these three toys. If that's the case, does it matter the order that she chose them in? What if she chose the chew toy first, then the bear, then the dog? Well, the thing is, it's still the same three toys coming on the vacation with her, so the order wouldn't matter here, so we should use combinations. What about another example? Let's say that uh, there's 10 people, and two are randomly selected to win... And let's say they both win the same prize, right? Maybe they both win an iPad. And let's say that for argument's sake, the iPads are exactly identical. They're the same color. They're the same make and model. They're exactly the same as each other, right? If that is the case, then, um, then we actually wouldn't care what order the people were selected in, right? If person A gets selected first, then person B. In this case, that's the same as though person B was selected first and then person A, because it's still the same two people out of the 10 who are winning the same prize. Whereas if it was different prizes, that's when it would be permutations because that's when you probably care what order we're selected in, right? What if one prize was a vacation and one was a pencil, right? In that case, you probably do care which order you're selected in because those are two very different prizes and also very different levels of prize as well that's for sure and so if we have if we're if it's a certain number of people selected to win the same prize then having the same group selected we wouldn't actually care about the order whereas if it's different prizes then we care about the order because switching the order switches who gets what prize or at least switches what prizes certain people get all right so next i'm going to uh, go over another example using our combinations equation It says, how many ways can you choose two students from a group of five? In this case, we're not choosing two students and then arranging them in a certain order. We're just choosing two students. And so regardless of what order those students are selected in, it uh, doesn't actually make a difference. If we select Andrea and Bob, or Bob and then Andrea, that's counted as the same combination. And so therefore, we should use combinations. Whereas had the question asked us to choose two students and from a group of five and arrange them. And how many ways could we do that? That's when it would be permutations. All right, so let's plug in our values. In this case, we know that n is five because we're choosing from five people and r is two. So that's gonna be five factorial over five minus two factorial times two factorial. So that's gonna be five factorial over three factorial, two factorial. Five factorial, is five times four times, well, three times two times one, which is just three factorial. And that's over three factorial times two factorial, which is just two times one. Uh, let's continue over here. Uh, the thing is we can cancel out the three factorials like that. And then we're just left with five times four, which is 20 over two times one, which is two and 20 over two is 10. So therefore there are 10 ways that you can choose two students from a group of five students in the event that order doesn't matter. All right, well, that's all I have for you guys today. Great work today, and we'll see you for the next one.